Remember, we are still in the open data block, so um, I'm going to do something on like the projects I did over last month um, in that area. So um, I did, uh, yeah, well, I got enthusiastic about open data at one point. Um, I got involved with Wikidata, and yeah, I thought like, what are the possibilities of doing something with that data? So I have three example projects. Um, which are the Tree of Life, Fonts on Growing Trees, and the Markets of Berlin. I'm going to go into that later. Um, yeah, so the Tree of Life is basically um, the taxonomy of all life forms in a tree. Um, that's with the data of Wikidata. And um, you're <coughs> like, while you have that tree on the one side, you always have the more information in the Wikipedia of the Wikipedia page in another um, panel I'm going to show you. And uh, since it's Wikidata data, which is super nice to do this kind of things, you have them instantly multilingual, which I used. And um, right now, so I'm not very good in biology. I just thought that was a nice project and that's interconnected so you can show something. Um, so back then I decided to make it all derived from biota, which some biologists told me is not exactly the thing you do with biology. Anyway, so um, I decided that at one point I want to have the, like, more than just deciding what is the um, first node or the root node, I would like to show, like, what we have or what is there in Wikidata or of the taxonomy, but, you know, time and stuff. So... Um, that's the side. So as I said, like you have on the one side, you have the Wikipedia page about the different things. You can click them. You can see like what, like on every node, you can like see what's connected with them. You can change it in different languages, and yeah, the UI isn't that pretty, but you know, it does what it needs to do. <coughs> it's basically so. Um, it's basically first of all, you take all that data and have that huge dump from Wikidata, which is JSON. And then I had a Python script run over that to get me the right connections because you need basically the parents and then the children connected in the way that the parents know who are their children. But obviously in Wikidata you're gonna have like the children knowing who their parents are. So you would want to take a script, run it all over the dump, or build a tree, write it in your, database, and then do some JS magic, and that's it. Um, <clears throat> the thing is, like, I'm also planning to do that in Sparkle, which would be so much cooler, because you wouldn't have to have your own database, but, you know, we there is the need of complex queries on Wikidata first, but as soon as that's there, it's going to be super awesome. So the next project I did, that was a university project. Um, that's not exactly open data. So um, we decided to um, point out the conflicts in the electronic supply chain. And um, we had to base that on, on research because there is like close to non-open data to hardware. Like neither what it is made of nor where it comes from exactly. So that was pretty harsh to find the data first. And um, in the end, we decided to visualize it, um, which went pretty far and um, like have kind of an interactive story or game where you have like different options to choose from and like influence your story as one of those workers in, a, in China in a factory assembling electronics, which is a pretty harsh topic and that it makes it really hard like, to realize that there is close to non data about that because um, like, we had to research a lot and in the end we ended up with uh, China Labor Watch and some BBC documentary and like, you collect from here and there, but there is no, like, not that one data source where you could get an overview of like, how that all works. Um, yeah, so we did that with HTV Berlin. Mm, and that's what it looks like. So we have those like 
pixel images um, to visualize. Um, you have different options to choose from. You have an energy level. You have a money level. I can encourage you to play it because, or like play it. I mean, um, because it's really interesting to see what happens and. It's not for the for the story. It's I mean, it's more for the story than for the game thing. But it's still interesting how you struggle and like even you're just in that situation of clicking from different options. So that is basically um, the whole information here, like the text, the options, the money that you gain and you lose, and the energy is just in a huge JSON file, um, and. We chose those pixel um, images for visualizations because it's. I think it's the right um, distance level. It's not like I don't. We don't try to like reenact something with real images. Um, at the same time, we don't like. It's not too cute or too funny or like that drawn thing. I don't know. I thought it was nice. So and the so that was a pretty big project, the fonts and ground trees thing. So that was one part, the interactive story, and there is another part I can only recommend you, but I didn't work on that much. Um, that was for discovering the materials used on your phone, um, and uh, there they actually decided to at one point. So there was one guy who was researching for them mo mostly, and he spoke like five languages fluently, and he was researching in all those languages. It was really hard to find anything, like any data, on just like what material and how much of those materials are in my phone, actually. So they decided in the end to um, have a part where you can just log in, I think, with GitHub or something, and just add data to it. So um, have that visualization becoming like more accurate. <clears throat> So, and the last one is a really classical one. Um, you just take data, like open data from, in that case, Berlin open data, and map it on a map. Um, in this case, we decided to have Berlin's markets on a map. And um, you, just can, you can just select a time and a date where you want to go, and they, then you're gonna have, on a map, you're gonna have pop-ups of the markets that are on that day in that time. Um, and additional markers in the pop-ups, uh, uh, additional information in the pop-ups and so on. So that, that's what it looks like. It's really like straightforward. You have a, the panel over there to select date and time. You can just click on any pop-up to see what market it is exactly, the address, the additional information and stuff. So that project actually um, took a lot more time than you would expect. So actually, so there's Leaflet, which is super cool to just take data and map it on a map. Um, but you take that data from Open Data Berlin, uh, Berlin Open Data, and then you have to start it to decide, like, are you going to parse all that data? Because obviously it's not machine readable. I mean, they, they give it, and they give it you in an open license, which is super, like CC0, I think it was in this case as well, which is super cool, and um, I really encourage them to do more of that, but the problem is it's not consistent in any way, so you either have to parse all those cases out, or you decide to do that with a program. Um, we, in the end, did it by hand, which was probably the worst idea because it took forever. But uh, in the end, so um, we actually researched, uh, so it wasn't me, it was mostly Charlie, and, <laughs> and we researched like where are the like geo coordinations of all those markets um, to get them on that map, and that was just a pain. Anyway, that's a nice start still. So. Um, yeah, so um, that's it about the projects already. So the. Um, the conclusion I got from that was that there is a lot of data which is just not available, like the data on uh, hardware, and um, we had different other project ideas, like, I don't know, doing something with historical borders and stuff, which is just not there. Like, no one gave it out on their free license yet, which is sad. Um, then there is that data, as I said before, that is just, like, not usable from this, like from that how it is right now, so it needs parsing and it needs some love in a way. And then um, 
obviously you have those cases of data just being hidden in some weird PDF and some like, I don't know, in some Anfrage an den Bundestag from the Linkspartei or whatever, like, um, that is also very sad because the data is actually there and it's made available, it's on a free license, but it's just hidden so deep somewhere that no, that it's not, like, no one finds it and no one actually uses it. Um, so my conclusion from all that stuff was that we need more open data to hack more cool stuff because that would be pretty amazing and there are so much things out there that, is measure that are measurable that uh, could be done, I don't know, that could be visualized, that could be made um, accessible. And obviously I want to thank like the people who worked with me and especially Charlie because uh, she did a lot of the design stuff and she's just cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. Thank you. We are.